Hello folks, we're gonna measure the distance to the sun using a solar power meter. Right here, simple piece of electronics. We'll point it at the sun as it moves throughout the day. And we're measuring the direct normal irradiance. After a long winter, springtime delights with color and fragrance. As the sun rises higher and higher in the sky, life just explodes. I began to wonder whether I can measure the distance to the sun by using the inverse square law. The solar irradiance is about a thousand watts per meter squared. The whole industry has sprung up around this energy source. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory has a number of online resources, including maps. Instead of using my own data, I decided to use publicly available data, as you see here. So I took this chart and extracted the data and plotted everything out. I primarily focused on the data from uh, Teide Observatory in the Canaries, a very beautiful place. This observatory is located at about 2300 meters above sea level, and uh, if you don't know where the Canaries are, they're off the western coast of Africa. So let's have a closer look at the data. I primarily focused on Izana. Uh, from the island of Tenerife, okay, from the Taide Observatory, um, because it has the highest uh, power levels, right? So this data, as you can see, was captured, uh, they're monthly averages, but they're captured on clear um, days, okay, with uh, hardly any clouds, and that's important, because the atmosphere will... Um, you know, attenuate some of the energy. And so we see two months here, uh, January and July. And it's very interesting that in uh, January, the intensity is higher <laughs> than in July. And you'll see why that is. I'll uh, show you everything. And um, yeah, so I digitized this data using an online uh, tool and put the data in a spreadsheet and began doing calculations which I'll show you. Uh, just incredible what we can deduce from this simple graph so stay tuned. So here we go let's get into it. So it's a busy spreadsheet and I cover some things up so I can focus your attention. So let's focus on the graph data on the left. That was extracted from the graph and you can see a plot at the bottom okay now as i mentioned before we need to pair up the data with uh, azimuth and elevation and for that i used um, the naval uh, observatory website okay to extract uh, that data and i offset for uh, utc etc and using the elevation i can calculate the um, ground range. But hold on a second, how do I know what the slant range is? <laughs> and that's where the magic is. I used the inverse square law, okay, and I postulated a total power of the sun, as you can see in the spreadsheet top left, okay, and I matched the horizontal distance, the yellow highlighted box, okay, with what the globe predicts, where the sun is exactly overhead at the zenith. So obviously I'm doing that because I'm postulating a flat Earth. So this is in, in a coordinate that center on Izana. Okay, so if you believe in the globe theory, this would be like a uh, plane that's tangent and touches the Earth at Izana. Okay, so that's what this is. And we're going to plot uh, this in a second and it'll blow you away. Here's the data folks, just incredible. So I uncovered the chart on the right, the big one, and notice the greenish bluish curve, that's the data, 
and then I put a curve fit on it and that's the actual path of the Sun measured with this technique now it's very interesting that initially it appears the Sun is coming from far away and then rapidly um, adjust to this curve and that's due to refraction and attenuation in the atmosphere the elevation angles are very low and there is a lot of propagation to the atmosphere and dissipation of the solar um, energy so it translates into a distance okay but um, it's not accurate so right when he joins the curve it's about 15 uh, over 15 degree elevation and that's when the data becomes extremely accurate so look at that just a perfect curve around um, the world and we'll project this because right now it's kind of confusing it's got two different radii at the closest approach is about 5400 and you'll see that uh, um, at a certain angle towards the uh, east has got a much larger radius so remember refraction in the atmosphere in the curved space-time plays a big important part in giving us the globe illusion if you've been following my channel you'll uh, no doubt have heard me say that a few times um, but let's look at this spreadsheet right above the curve box I have some data up there so R is the radius of uh, the curve fit from the North Pole and then below that D is the distance of Izana from the North Pole and notice it's about 9,000 kilometers and it doesn't quite jive with the distance derived from the globe, just uh, the surface distance unless we apply the four-thirds uh, R approximation which hints that refraction has been shrinking the globe so this is just incredible folks when we plot it on, on an azimutal equidistant map we can see the path that it uh, goes around the North Pole just incredible if we do the same thing on a globe uh -uh, there's gonna be issues yeah not quite uh, what you expected did you yeah you know the world is very mysterious and it's very exciting to use all the tools at our disposal to figure out exactly uh, where we are because the globe is one of the oldest things we haven't discarded you know it was developed in the visible spectrum by the Greeks that lived um, you know in very sunny areas and uh, we're still stuck with it in this space age which is incredible the globe is an archaic model of the world that's been disproven by science over and over and you would think people would be shouting that from uh, you know the educational puppets but they don't because a lot of people are just taught the old theories the Almighty has warned us not to walk by sight because we will be deceived. There is light bending, you know, and um, a lot more mysteries. And I will bring you those as I have time. But um, let's have a look at the July data as well. Here the effective uh, radius of curvature is 10,000 kilometers and the sun is much closer to um, Izana. And also notice that we, when we curve fit the data, we got a lower effective um, power, total radiated power by the sun. Um, again, we mesh the yellow um, cells to make sure we get the same distance. And it makes sense because during the summertime there is a little bit more moisture, right? Temperatures are higher. Still, the data was taken on clear, uh, clear sky conditions, you know. Um, but yeah, now the elevation is much higher and the path is uh, very nice and clean. So just in incredible uh, results folks but why is there a difference in powers well I've been following and studying the Sun with uh, my telescope I have a 8 inch Smith Cassegrain with a solar filter and I've been taking lots of pictures of the Sun and here you can see the difference between uh, you know December time frame and June July time frame um, 
there is a noticeable difference and this is done at the same um, elevation angle I believe there is a difference and there's also a difference when the Sun rises you know there's refraction magnification but also the Sun gets closer and then farther away so there you have it folks just incredible but folks, there is something very dangerous in this picture. What if the sun deorbits? We've seen anomalous, uh, perhaps supernatural intervention around our sun. And over the years, there have been these drastic drops in CO2 that we've uncovered from cores in Antarctica. Somebody is intervening. I hope you all know the real Son, the real life giver, the Lord Jesus Christ, because folks, He is coming back and He is the only way to salvation. God bless you all and stay true to the faith.